Hi guys, it's me Jess here and welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you how I make a long puffy sleeve blouse with a Peter Ben collar. This blouse is going to be a perfect item for your phone wardrobe. That's why I hope you guys will like it and try it out and let's get started. The first step is making the pattern for the blouse. To make the back bodice pattern, I draw a straight line cutting the edge horizontal line first. From the first straight line, I keep drawing another one at 2 cm next to it. From the end of the second straight line, I mark up 7.5 cm, which is the half width of the next side of the blouse that I want. Then drawing a perpendicular line from that mark. The width of this line will be 3 cm, which is the deep of the neck at the back bodice. Then keep drawing a straight line from the end of this perpendicular line to cut the edge horizontal line. After that, I connect the mark on the second straight line to this cutting point before making a mark in the middle of the slanted line I just created. I keep connecting this mark to the end of the perpendicular line before making a mark in the middle of the new slanted line. Then I connect this mark to the mark on the second straight line and to the end of the third straight line. Based on it, I draw a curved line to create the neckline of the back bodice. From the end of the second straight line, I keep making another mark at 18 cm from it. It's the half of my shoulder side. Then drawing a perpendicular line from that mark. The width of this line will be 2.6 cm, which is 1 by 10 my shoulder side minus 1 cm. Then connect the end of this perpendicular line to the top of the neckline to create a shoulder line for the back bodice. From the first straight line, I draw another one at 21 cm from it. It's a quarter of my bust side plus 1 cm. It will be the bust line of the back bodice. From the end of this line, I mark up 25 cm, which is a quarter of my bust side plus 5 cm. After that, I continue the perpendicular line at the shoulder to cut the burst line at one point. From the cutting point, I mark to inside 1.5 cm before connecting it to the end of the shoulder line. Then I mark in the middle of this new line before connecting it to the mark on the burst line that I marked before. I keep marking in the middle of the new slanted line before connecting it to the second mark on the burst line. I keep doing the same by marking in the middle of the new slanted line before connecting it to the first mark on the burst line and the mask on the first slanted line. Based on it, I draw a curved line to create a sleeve line for the back bodice. From the second straight line, I draw another one at 60 cm from it. It's the length from the shoulder to my hip. It's also the length of the blouse that I want. From the end of this line, I mark up 25 cm, which is the quarter of my bust side plus 5 cm. It's the same width that I make on the bust line, but if it's smaller than the quarter of your hip side, you need to make it bigger. Then connect this mark to the end of the sleeve line to create a side line of the blouse. Adding 1 cm for seam allowance after that, and we will have the back bodice pattern after cutting. You will need to cut this pattern in full fabric at the edge horizontal line. Moving to the front bodice pattern, I will bait on the back bodice pattern I just created. I lower down the shoulder line to cm foot. From the cutting point between the perpendicular line at the shoulder and the burst line, I mark to inside 2.5 cm instead of 1.5 cm that I did at the back bodice. Then doing the same way to create a new sleeve line for the front bodice. From the first straight line, I mark down on the horizontal line 14 cm, which is the deep of the front neck that I want. Then connect this mark to the top of the new shoulder line. 
Bayoni I draw slightly curved line to create a neckline for the front bodice. I make this blouse with the little V neck look, but you also can make it become a round neck look by making the deep of the front neck shorter. From the horizontal line, I draw another one at one and a half centimeter outside the pattern. It's the half width of the button and the buttonhole area that I want. After that, I keep drawing another horizontal line at three centimeter from the previous one. Is the width of the button in the buttonhole area. After that, I continue the neckline to the first horizontal line, then drawing the opposite line from it to the second horizontal line. Adding one centimeter for seam allowance after that, and we will have the front bodice pattern after cutting. You will need to cut two pieces with this pattern to make the color of the blouse. I copy the neckline at the front and the back bodice. Make sure to deduct 1 cm of seam allowance at the shoulder line. And the shoulder line of the front and the back bodice will be the same. After that, I measure the width of the collar that I want. I make it in the same width with the shoulder line. You can make it bigger or smaller if you want. Then I draw a curved line that is parallel with the neckline. It will be the outside collar line of the collar pattern. At the end of the front neckline, which is the inside collar line, I mark to the inside 2cm, which is the width of the ruffle hem that I want, minus 1cm for seam allowance. Then I draw a slanted line from that mark to cut the outside collar line to finish the collar pattern. And we will have the collar pattern after cutting. You will need to cut this pattern in full fabric at the middle of the back collar pattern part. Moving to the sleeve pattern, I measure the total width of the sleeve line at the front and the back by this pattern first. Make sure to measure them without the seam allowance. I draw a horizontal line first. Then I keep drawing another two horizontal line at 5 cm to side of the first one. So the width between two new horizontal line will be 10 cm, which is the width of the perky part at the top of the sleeve. After that, I draw a straight line and cut three horizontal lines. From the cutting point between the straight line and the top horizontal line, I mark at 13 cm on the horizontal line. It's 1 by 5 my bird side minus 3 cm. From that mark, I measure and mark on the straight line 21 cm, which is a half of the total width of the sleeve line at the front and the back bladder that I just checked before, minus 2 cm. Then I divide this slanted line into three equal parts, and doing the same for the other horizontal line. At the top mark on the first slanted line, I draw an outside perpendicular line with 1.5 cm width. At the third part of the slanted line, I mark in the middle first. Then I draw an inside perpendicular line with a half centimeter width. After that, I draw a curved line go to this mark to create the sleeve line of the sleeve pattern. Doing similar at the other side of the horizontal line. However, the width of the outside perpendicular line will be two and a half centimeter instead of one and a half centimeter to create the back sleeve line of the sleeve pattern. I connect the top sleeve line together first, then I move it up 3 cm and redraw the top part of the sleeve pattern. From the top part of the sleeve pattern, I mark down 56 cm on the first horizontal line. It's the length of the sleeve that I want minus 4 cm, which is the length of the curve at the end of the sleeve. Then drawing a straight line through that mark. After that, I draw two horizontal lines from two ends of the sleeve line to cut the straight line to create the underarmic line of the sleeve pattern. Adding 1 cm for seam allowance after that. And we will have the sleeve pattern after cutting. You will need to cut two pieces for this pattern. Now, let's start sewing this blouse. I use 2 meters of cotton fabric in white color for this DIY. 
After cutting two pieces of the front bladder and one piece of the back bladder, I connect them together at the shoulders and the side lines. With this leg, I connect two underarm big lines together first. However, I keep 11cm at the end of the underarm big line to create a sleeve bracket. To finish the sleeve bracket, I fold the end fabric inside a half centimeter foot then keep folding it again and sewing. At the end of the sleeve, I make two loose seam foot. Then I create a gathering fabric there later. The final width of the gathering fabric will be the width at the end of the sleeve around my wrist. I cut a rectangle with 10 cm width, which is two times the width of the curve at the end of the sleeve that I want, plus 2 cm for seam allowance and 2 cm longer than the width of the gathering fabric that I just finished before. I connect one width line of the rectangle to the end of the sleeve foot. Make sure to keep 1 cm extra at two end of the gathering fabric and sewing. After that, I fold the other width line and two length lines inside 1 cm foot. Then keep folding the width line to the first seam and make the second seam. At the top of the sleeve, I make two loose seam foot. Then I create a gathering fabric there later. The final width of the gathering fabric will make the total width of the sleeve line to be the same with the sleeve line at the front and the back bodice, so we can connect them together later. Moving to the collar, I measure the total length of the outside collar foot. Then I cut a long fabric line with 8cm width, which is two times the width of the ruffle hem of the collar that I want, plus 2cm for seam allowance. And double the length of the outside collar that I just checked before. I fold the long fabric in half by the width line foot and iron to keep my folding. At the other side of the folding line, I make two loose seam foot, then I create a gathering fabric there later. The final length of the gathering fabric will be the same with the length of the outside collar, so we can connect them together later. Make sure the ruffle hem part will be inside the collar. After sewing, I apply the other piece of the collar to the first one and make the second seam over the first one. After that, I turn two pieces of the collar inside out to hide on the seam and iron to make it nicer. Then I sew two inside collar lines together. Now I'm connecting the collar to the blouse at the neckline.
at the end of two front neckline, I fold the button and the buttonhole part to outside, so it will be outside of the ending part of the collar. Then I use the bias fabric with 3cm width to apply on top of the collar and sew in. After that, I make a few small cuts at the curve line. Then I fold the other side of the bias fabric inside 1cm foot, then keep folding it again to the first seam and make the second seam. At two end of the front neck, I turn the folding at the button in the buttonhole area inside foot. Then I keep that folding to the ending line of the blouse and so to finish the button in the buttonhole area. I finish the end of the blouse by folding the end fabric inside two times with one centimeter each time and sewing. The last step is adding the button and creating the buttonhole at the front of the blouse and at two end of the sleeve. And I finished this DIY. Here's my final result. This is such a cute but pretty blouse. I'm sure you can easily make and match this blouse to create so many outfits for this season. Hope you guys like this DIY and try it out soon. See you in the next video.